In this decade, the A-35 has probably been Airbus's most talked about wide-body aircraft, while the A-31 once faced skepticism and even disdain due to its lower order numbers compared to other models from the manufacturer. However, it has recently defied those doubts with the positive reception from airlines. The clearest evidence came in 20-24, when Airbus delivered nearly 800 commercial aircraft. The majority of the wide-body sales came from the A-30, not the A-50. So what gives this aircraft such a strong appeal? How has it managed to outperform not only the Boeing 787, but even the A-35 itself? Let's find out. In 2014, Airbus introduced the A30neo as its strategic response to Boeing's 787, signaling the beginning of an intense but fascinating rivalry in the skies. From the outset, Airbus didn't simply refresh the existing A30, it gave the Neo a bold identity, anchored by its cutting-edge Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines. These engines were more than just a replacement for the Trent 700, they combined the proven foundation of their predecessor with the advanced eco-friendly technologies of the Trent XWB, the very engine that powers the highly efficient A350. The Trent 7000 was designed to impress a giant 112-inch fan, a bypass ratio of 10 to 1, double that of the earlier model, and a compact, high-pressure core enhanced by the latest fully-swept wide-cord fan blade technology. All these refinements translated into a 10% reduction in specific fuel consumption compared to the Trent 700, giving airlines a powerful incentive to embrace the NEO. For carriers looking to cut costs while projecting a greener image, the A330neo seemed like a perfectly balanced choice between efficiency, sustainability, and proven reliability. Yet despite its technical brilliance, the A330neo's debut was met with a surprisingly muted reception. Orders trickled in slowly, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the program. Airbus had originally hoped to secure around 1,000 sales, but in reality, the tally has hovered closer to 300. Many critics wondered aloud whether the Neo would ever escape the shadow of its competitors, or whether it would only end up becoming a failure for the manufacturer. But Airbus didn't give up. Convinced of the Neo's potential, the company pushed ahead with further refinements, ensuring that the aircraft evolved to meet the demands of modern airlines. Among the most significant changes was a complete redesign of its wings. Where the original A330 once shared structural lineage with the A340, the Neo version was given its own bespoke 64-meter wing. This wasn't a cosmetic adjustment. The maker introduced a new blended wingtip device, coupled with a carbon fiber reinforced plastic outer span extension. Didn't stop there, engineers reprofiled the wing's twist, fine-tuned its camber, optimized the belly fairing, and improved the integration between the engine, nacelle, and pylon. The result was extraordinary. With an aspect ratio of 11, the highest of any commercial airliner currently flying, the Neo's wings dramatically reduced drag and optimized lift across all flight stages. From the moment of takeoff to long-haul cruise and even gentle landings, the aircraft benefited from improved aerodynamics and efficiency. This wasn't just a technical upgrade. It stated that the A330neo would remain competitive well into the next decade. Airbus also paid attention to details that might seem minor, but make a huge difference in daily airline operations. One such improvement was the NEO's re-engineered tires. Airlines had long faced the costly burden of frequent tire replacements, a maintenance headache that Airbus sought to solve. By redesigning the tires, the maker extended its lifespan from around 10 years to an impressive 12. For airlines, this meant fewer ground delays, lower replacement costs, and enhanced reliability. More importantly, these new tires weren't just about saving money, they directly contributed to the Neo's performance, offering smoother rides and better handling compared to the earlier A330 CEO. Taken together, these advancements turned the aircraft into more than just a derivative upgrade. It became an aircraft that airlines could rely on for both efficiency and comfort a machine capable of competing not only with Boeing's 787, but also with Airbus's own next generation A3050. From the outside, the changes might appear subtle, but in operation, they make all the difference. Lower costs, reduced emissions, and better passenger experiences. By the way, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. Trust us, you won't want to miss it. 
But that's not all. This is what could truly change airlines' perception of this aircraft. At first glance, it seemed natural that the A330neo would struggle to capture attention. After all, the long-haul, mid-size, wide-body segment had been dominated by Boeing's 787 Dreamliner since 2004, a full decade before the Neo made its debut. With the 787 already firmly entrenched, many believed the A330neo would remain a secondary option with a modest order book that failed to match Airbus's initial ambitions. For a time, this prediction looked accurate as the Dreamliner appeared to enjoy an unshakable lead. But then, the aviation landscape shifted, and unexpectedly, the A330neo began to shine. The global airline industry today is not the same as it was when the Dreamliner first entered service. Demand for air travel has soared, while airlines are battling a severe pilot shortage. This crisis, particularly acute in the United States, has forced thousands of flight cancellations and schedule disruptions. With training costs skyrocketing and waves of retirements thinning the pilot pool, the shortage has been described as a looming storm that could last well into the next decade. Airlines are desperate for solutions, and this is where the A330neo has stepped in to offer answers that the 787 cannot fully provide. Unlike the Dreamliner, which was designed primarily for long-haul missions, the A330neo offers a level of operational flexibility that fits today's urgent needs. Its design allows it to fly both shorter regional routes under 4,000 nautical miles and longer intercontinental legs up to 8,150 nautical miles, placing it directly alongside the 787-9 in terms of range. But here's the difference. The A330neo achieves this with lower maintenance costs, longer service cycles, and optimized predictability in upkeep. Airlines benefit from an aircraft that can rack up more flight cycles without constant downtime, all while consuming less on operational overhead. In an era where efficiency and reliability are paramount, this positions the Neo as not just an alternative, but in many cases, a superior choice to the Dreamliner. In addition, Airbus also tapped into a strategic advantage Boeing cannot match, cockpit commonality. From the A320 family to the A350, Airbus aircraft share standardized flight decks and control systems. For airlines, this means a pilot trained on one Airbus type can transition seamlessly to another with minimal retraining. The NEO inherits this design philosophy, making it easier and cheaper to integrate into existing Airbus fleets. Boeing, by contrast, offers no such advantage. A 737 pilot cannot simply move into a 787 cockpit without extensive additional training. In a world plagued by pilot shortages, this operational flexibility is invaluable, giving Airbus a decisive edge. And the results are beginning to speak for themselves. Carriers like Cebu Pacific and Delta Airlines have recognized the NEO's potential, putting it to work on routes where its mix of fuel efficiency, passenger capacity, and cost effectiveness delivers real financial gains. Cebu Pacific, for instance, reported notable revenue growth after deploying the A330neo on high-demand routes, a testament to how the aircraft can transform airline economics. The A330neo's story, then, is not one of playing catch-up. Instead, it is one of quiet resilience and strategic adaptation. What once looked like an underdog against the Dreamliner has now emerged as a credible, even preferable, option for airlines balancing growth with the harsh realities of today's labor and cost pressures. In the face of skepticism, the NEO has proven its worth, and in doing so, it has turned what seemed like a losing battle into a powerful statement. Sometimes, the best response to a market dominated by one player isn't to imitate it, but to outlast it with smarter, more versatile solutions. Don't stop there, Airbus made more. The maker has shown a strong commitment to the A330neo by continuously investing in its development. The latest example is the strategically important Step 4 upgrade package, introduced for both the A330-800 and 900 variants. Its mission is clear, to tackle one of the biggest challenges airlines face, take off limitations at constrained airports. So, what does Step 4 actually deliver? In essence, it enables the jetliner to lift more payload during takeoff. Through aerodynamic refinements, the aircraft can now carry an additional 2.6 tons at standard airports, and up to 4 tons at more demanding airports with short runways or challenging geographic conditions, such as Madrid or Minneapolis-St. Paul. This translates directly into greater profitability for long-haul routes. In particular, 
The performance boost is achieved primarily through the Enhanced Takeoff Configuration ETOC. Airbus leveraged its advantage of having a common cockpit philosophy. Across the Airbus family, from the A320 to the A350, aircraft feature five standard flap slat lever positions. Yet in practice, pilots have typically used only four. With ETOC, Airbus introduced new intermediate flap settings that fill in aerodynamic gaps. These additional configurations allow for smoother flap slash slat transitions, generating more optimal lift and significantly reducing drag during takeoff and initial climb. Importantly, these improvements require no physical modifications to the A330neo. Pilots simply enter the new settings into the flight management computer, MCDU, before departure. Beyond ETOC, this maker also tackled drag reduction by streamlining the operation of other systems. The retraction time of the landing gear has been cut by 0.8 seconds, while the sequence for the gear bay doors has been shortened by 0.2 seconds. Combined with a new automation feature, the automatic landing gear door opening function, which allows gear retraction to begin earlier, right after liftoff. These refinements minimize drag at a critical phase, enhancing climb performance and improving fuel burn. Continuous investments like the Step 4 package reaffirm that the A330neo is an aircraft undergoing constant improvement. Strategically, this ensures the model remains competitive against the most advanced rivals in its class. And with the maker also preparing for future certification to operate on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, the A330neo is increasingly proving its long-term potential to reshape the global aviation landscape. Finally, customer confidence and preference for Airbus aircraft, particularly models like the A330neo, are increasingly growing due to notable features in design, performance, and reliability. Customers appreciate the advanced features and comfort that Airbus offers in its cabins, such as spacious interiors, modern amenities, and a diverse entertainment system. Moreover, the dedicated service from Airbus, including technical support and maintenance, also reinforces customer trust. Airlines feel more secure knowing they are partnering with a reputable aircraft manufacturer that ensures safety and performance for their fleets. All these factors have created a strong relationship between Airbus and its customers, reflected in the increasing preference for the company's products. The A330neo's journey has been anything but straightforward. From a rocky launch and sluggish orders to a resurgence powered by innovation, it has carved out its own niche in the market. What once seemed destined to be overshadowed is now proving to be one of Airbus's most valuable assets, a wide-body jet that blends the heritage of the past with the performance demands of the future. What do you think the A330neo is still lacking in order to become more widespread? Let us know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, subscribe for more deep dives into the battles shaping the skies above us.